show. We do this every week. And, you know, I've been a reporter for more than 35 years in New York City, my hometown. I mostly do investigative stories. I sometimes do human interest reports. But I can tell you, for the last 10 days, I've pretty much been consumed by the junior files. I did get some access to some of the evidence in the case, and I was trying to open up the files, make sense of them, report as accurately as I could, because that's what we're supposed to do. You have to be responsible with a case like this. And if there was anything new, I was trying to bring it to you. Some people thought they'd get more information than I brought last week in the first three reports. But I have to be very careful in the way I present information, and I do my best. And I guess that's why I'm still around after 35 years. After the stories aired last week, I was contacted by the sister of Jason Velez. Jason Velez is the last person to spend time with 15-year-old Junior Guzman Feliz before the teenager was chased to a bodega on June 20th and then stabbed to death. Jason Velez said that he warned Junior not to go to Adam's place in the Bronx, which was near Junior's home. He did, though, place the call to Junior that brought the teenager out of the house on that Wednesday night. I went out of state to meet him. He says that he fears for his life because he's been getting a lot of threats. He had to close down most of his social media accounts. Here is some of what Jason Velez had to say. They blame me just because I was the last person who was physically with him. They're just sitting there saying that I basically set up Junior and everything when in all reality, I didn't even know what was gonna happen to Junior. It was exactly 9.54, I texted June. And he just said that he was playing his PlayStation 4. He came down the block and he gave me five, he gave me five dollars. He you should know we was already about to smoke. When he mentioned to me that he had felt like going to Adam's place. He knew a girl over there that he was talking to, so I just thought maybe, you know, he was gonna go see her. He was telling me about a situation that happened to one of his friends and I told him that it happened and it occurred on Adam's place apparently. He had told me that one of his friends, like, there was, like, 60 guys, like, five different cars, and, you know, that they hopped out on his friend and that they chased him down the block. And that apparently that they knocked him out, that the car drove by slowly after and looked at him. Looked at Junior. So when did that happen? He was telling me it happened a few days prior before his death. One of the guys, they just sat there and they, like, me mugged him. Stared at him? Yes. Did you ever hang out at Adam's place? No. Why? Because, I, to be honest with you, I just never liked that crowd. I was like, bro, this is on, the streets is nothing to play with. Every day, you wake up, as soon as you step out your door, it's a gamble because, like, who you hang out with, you gotta really sit there and choose your friends wisely. Junior basically was an innocent bystander who just, you know, he died because he was down by association. From the beginning, police said, police have noted that Junior had no criminal background. No, he didn't. And they say, you know, when this happened, some of the people from the Explorers were devastated. Some of the volunteers and people from the precinct that knew him, they were devastated. So the Explorers organization continued to see him as a good kid. And even now, there are like two scholarships named after him. What do you make of that? You know, it's, it's honestly a beautiful thing because, you know, Junior, he really is a good kid. Did you get involved with a gang? No, never. But you did get into some trouble. I did get into trouble, and honestly, this is right now, me being away from New York, it's really my my rehabilitation. But you got no texts while you were there? You know, yeah, I got one phone call, and that phone call was from his mother at 1128. And what did she say? She, had, she was telling him to come home. He just wanted to be a teen. I met Junior through his sister, Genesis. Did you date her? I did date her. Junior was 10. I remember because it was his 11th birthday. You were at the party? I remember that cake because he got so happy about it. I stood on my, on my stoop, on the front porch of the building, and I just watched him walk down the block, and I knew, I knew he wasn't coming. I knew something was wrong. I just felt just this negative energy, like, like something bad was gonna happen. 